Before you dive into the world of resin printing, let me recommend some equipment and upgrades that have helped make the process a little easier for me and can hopefully help you as well. <laughs> the provided USBs that come with the machines are very cheap quality and pretty much universally suck. I didn't know this until recently, but some print failures can happen from data corruption from lower quality USB sticks. My USB that came with my Elegoo machine could not complete the test rook, and I thought I was going crazy. And the USB that came with my M5S looked identical to the Elegoo one and stopped working after just a few weeks. Upgrading the USB will give you more confidence and peace of mind with your prints, and it doesn't have to be anything super expensive. Pretty much any name brand will be better than the provided USB. The only thing to look for is that the USB needs to be in a FAT32 format. I have no no idea why it's called that. All of the ones I had laying around the house were already in this format, but if you have some laying around that are not formatted to FAT32, it is super simple to reformat them. Here's an example from Google on screen. Pretty much all the new resin 3D printers come with a similar plastic spatula out of the box. From the manufacturer recommendations, this spatula is recommended to use on the FEP sheet for loose chunks or stuck prints. In my personal opinion though, it is a bit aggressive and will add unnecessary wear and tear to your FEP sheet. Now that most machines have a taint clean feature, scraping a failed print from the FEP should only be a last resort. So my recommended choice to replace the plastic scraper would be a rubber spatula. I got mine at the local Dollar Tree and I use it to mix my resin and feel around in the vat for loose chunks before every print. Any rubber spatula similar to this one should work. It is less aggressive than the provided plastic one and will preserve the life and health of your FEP. Most machines will also ship with a metal spatula for removing prints from the build plate. And while they do an okay job, the problem with most of them is that they have a flat edge. So instead of lifting the bottom layer of resin from the build plate from underneath, it's more forcing it off which can cause breaks and cracks in your prints and just make it harder overall to remove parts. To replace it, I got this sturdier one at a local hardware store. It has a sharp edge on it so it can easily get underneath the bottom layers on the build plate to help you remove the printed piece. When removing prints from your build plate, it also helps to have some kind of sturdy bucket or bin. This will help minimize some of the mess that comes from removing prints. In my videos, I usually just remove them over a mat because it looks better on camera, but off camera, I remove them inside a bin to minimize the mess. Then I just simply wipe it out and set it aside for the next print. A screen protector is a must have on your machine. I can't stress this enough. Some will come pre-installed with the machine, but if yours does not, I would recommend getting one immediately and installing it before running a print. I would even recommend keeping a few extras on hand as well. You never know when you could accidentally spill resin or puncture your FEP sheet. So it's better to play it safe and keep the screen protected. I have spilled resin on my screens two times in the past, but both times I had a screen protector on and I just easily wiped off the resin and swapped the screen protector out for a new one. I actually just replaced the screen protector on my M5S and I wish I would have recorded the process, but I didn't. So that'll have to wait for a future video. Next on the list of equipment is PPE. If this list was ranked by most important equipment, this would be number one. PPE or personal protective equipment is necessary for safely handling prints. The ones that come with your machine will work for a little bit to get you up and running, but you'll quickly need to replace everything after a few prints. Starting with a good respirator mask. Respirators offer the safest form of protection from fumes and particles when working with resin and isopropyl gases. When shopping for a respirator, you want to look for one that protects from VOCs or volatile organic compounds, has a snug fit, and can filter out non-oil based particles. This one is on Amazon for $19, comes with the air filters, and comes with the protective eyewear as well. I am no scientist though, so this is something I recommend people do their own research on before selecting one to use. The next thing you're going to need are some gloves, specifically nitrile gloves. While they're not as elastic or flexible as latex gloves, disposable nitrile gloves are more durable and resistant to chemicals. They always run deals on these at Harbor Freight if you have one nearby. You can usually get a 100 pack for 5 bucks. And if not, you can get a pack from Amazon for around $10. And trust me, you're going to use them like crazy, so make sure you get a bigger pack. I tried buying a thicker pair that I could reuse for cleaning and removing prints, but it always felt gross to me to put on gloves that have already been used. For me, it was just not worth the hassle. I just use nitrile gloves and dispose of them after I'm done. I'm gonna be honest, when I first started printing, I thought wearing safety glasses was kind of overkill until I realized how far supports can break off. After being hit in the face several times by supports, I now take the eyewear more seriously and never remove prints without safety glasses, but any kind of safety glasses will work. 
The next piece of equipment are some of these silicone slap mats. I bought three of them so far and I'll probably be buying more. These work great as a movable work surface and can be easily cleaned with some IPA and a paper towel when you're done using them. I also keep one under my actual printer just in case of a FEP leak. Please ignore the piece of paper under the front foot. I have a superstition that it's keeping all of my prints perfectly leveled. Whether you are using a wash and cure station or a homemade curing setup, you will still want some kind of handheld UV flashlight for curing resin inside of awkward spaces of hollowed prints. They they also work if you plan on doing any kind of resin welding to fill small cracks. Make sure the light source is strong enough though. Typical SLA resins cure between 350 and 410 nanometers of light, so you'll need something that outputs at least 350. I got a pair of these on Amazon for 10 bucks. I used to clean all my prints in several different IPA baths before getting a wash and cure station, and let me tell you, I wish I would have bought it on day one with the printer. It is so much more convenient when it comes to cleaning prints and safely curing them. It eliminates a lot of the mess and makes the whole process a lot more streamlined. To fill the wash and cure, you're going to need IPA or a cleaner of your choice. Now for IPA, I might get some heat for this, but I don't use 99% or even 91% IPA for cleaning my prints. It is way too expensive where I live, and the 70% I get from the Dollar Tree works just fine. It's about a third of the price and makes changing out the IPA for the wash and cure bucket a lot cheaper. A new tank of 70% IPA will usually last me about 4 months with daily use before I need to change it out. It takes around 21 of these bottles to top it off. I tried a few other cleaners to keep the cost down, but 70% IPA works best for me and my budget. Paper towels. Lots and lots of paper towels. I tried using dedicated microfibers, but it was just too expensive and does essentially the same thing as a paper towel. I use these brawny ones that have tear away pieces so you don't have to use the entire piece. They have a good material thickness and will last you a lot longer than a typical paper towel roll, but any paper towel will work just fine. If you plan on having professional finishes from your prints, you're going to need some form of sandpaper. Support bumps are inevitable and sanding them off is pretty much the only option. Some people leave them, which is fine, but after my printer puts in so much work, I feel like it deserves to have a nice finished print in the end. I already made a detailed video on sanding and showing my personal preference, which are a Dremel tool and some padded sanding squares if you want to check it out. The Dremel does a great job for quickly removing support bumps and the sanding pads help polish out the prints. Just make sure your prints are completely cured before or sanding and that you're wearing a mask to keep you safe from resin particles. When your prints are ready for assembly, you need something to hold them together. I use super glue, more specifically though, super glue gel. I didn't realize how much glue I would be using, but I mainly print pretty large models, so I use a lot more than if you were just printing minis. I mainly use this Gorilla Glue one. The gel works great because it doesn't run like traditional super glue, so it's easier to work with, and because it's not completely flat when applied, it gives the pieces more of a surface to grab onto. I have a few large pieces weighing around four pounds, and I've never had any issues with them coming apart after applying the super glue gel, so this stuff is pretty strong. This is all personal preference though. What works for me may not work for you. Actually, that applies to this entire video. Use whatever works for you and works with your budget. These are just some of the tools that I use that have made my workflow a little easier. I have added links in the description for some of the items I've purchased on Amazon. Some of these links are affiliate links, but I'm in no way sponsored by any of these products. It's just a way for me to make a few bucks for the channel if you use the link. All of these products have helped me out and I'm hoping they can help you out as well. I know this was a longer video so if you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate it, and I am beyond happy with the level of support the channel has received so far. I can't thank you enough. If you enjoyed the video or it helped you in any way, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next project.